This is something you might not notice, but it's something that I've twigged over the years, I suppose. Um, you know if you've had a long, hot, dry spell, and you're walking along the street, and it comes on to rain, you know, one of those showers where you see a few spots, and the next minute it's chucking it down, and you think, uh, I'm going to get wet. There's a smell about that water hitting fresh sort of tarmac and dryish grass and things. It's, I find it incredibly pleasant, especially after a long, hot, dry spell. That happens with my orchids. This orchid I've just watered and there's a smell to the media that happens as you get it wet. And it basically says, it was too dry in the first place. <laughs> it's actually, you know, it's like a telltale sign that perhaps that particular plant, it doesn't happen, you know, it doesn't happen to many, but it's just happened to this one. Now this one's been out and about and sat in the car and doing all sorts of strange things because it went to the um, meeting on Friday. Um, but it's just happened to that plant, which basically says that plant had got too dry. You know, totally dry. And this time of year, you know, with new growth pushing on, well, that's a no-no. <laughs> you know, I mean, it shouldn't have got that dry. It doesn't happen often. Um, but with the weather we had last week and the sort of temperatures that were going on, um, it's understandable because I'm late with my watering cycle on top of the heat of last week. So it's understandable. Um, in my book, it's not acceptable, but I had other things on the go. There are times when the plants just have to look after themselves. And this plant, quite honestly, should have been watered probably two days ago. You know, it's Monday today. That should have been done Saturday. Yeah, where was I Saturday? Out on an orchid walk. There's only so much you can do. And because of all my orchid walks, yesterday... I didn't have the steam or the energy to finish in to finish my watering. Otherwise, this would have got done yesterday. But it's been done now, and it's had a flipping good drink and a soak and everything with some feed and that. And um, it won't have done any damage, not to a dendrobium. But for other things, it could have even killed it. You know, if that had been a Masdevallia gone totally dry in that heat, the roots would have frazzled. Tiny little fine hair-like roots could have frazzled. Restrepias, same thing. So, you know, take care when your weather changes. When there's a dramatic change in temperature on the up. Because <laughs> things will dry out faster. You know, the plants are gasping for hydration. Keep your humidity high around them. It helps. It slows down the rate of transpiration, the rate of loss of moisture from the plant. But it still needs to be able to take in more at the base. You know, that, that's important. So, you know, watch your, watch your weather changes. The same happens at the other end. You know, you know if, you, if we had a particularly warm autumn, the days are getting shorter, so the plants are slowing down, slowly but surely. They're not growing as fast. They're not as active. And then you might get a cool spell. You would, don't carry on watering on the same frequency because suddenly your plants don't need anywhere near as much water. Temperatures have dropped, day lengths have dropped, you know, and that could be a sudden change. That's the time to seriously think about whether that plant should be watered or not and left till next time round. OK, so just as thoughts, you know, the weather doesn't stay the same all the time. It can be unpredictable. And the unpredictability in the UK is high. <laughs> Predictability low. It's like today, there were supposed to be bright spells. Not a flipping light. It's been raining, it's dull, it's overcast. And um, Mr Sun is hiding up behind the clouds and doesn't look like it's going to show its face all day long. I may be wrong, it might brighten up later, but uh, yeah, so uh, unpredictable weather. The bright weather we were supposed to have from Saturday lunchtime onwards, which is why I went to a butterfly haunt, didn't materialise. You know, again, unpredictable. What they said was going to happen didn't, and to a degree it sort of messed up my afternoon. Um, a wasted journey and... Um, 
<laughs> a hill climb I really could have done without. But, you know, that, that's the UK weather for you. You know, the best, best weather forecast you can have is to look out the window. Quite honestly, at least you get the next hour or two's weather. Guaranteed. OK, so just a word on, um, you know, weather changes and the, the way it can affect your watering patterns and the speed at which your plants dry out or the length of time they stay wet. Equally damaging to a degree, you know, so watch, watch how you go. Talk about contrived. I've just mixed up my hopefully my last amount of water to finish off my watering and I've over splooped the feed. <laughs> I've used one of those metric sploops instead of an imperial sploop. So the feed level is now a bit higher than I really want for today's watering. But <clears throat> that Miltoniopsis is bone dry and that may have partially harmed the plant. Now it's only been bone dry for a short amount of time but with the heat that's gone with it it's not going to be happy at this point. But because they don't like high feed levels I can't water that plant now with that. That's too high. These don't like high feed levels. So this time it's going to get pure RO water and by pouring it through that pot I'll dilute that, dilute that, ready for the rest because I've over splooped. Yeah it's a bit contrived and a bit fiddly. But, um, you know, <laughs> it'll do the job, just for, just for now. The zygote's still alive. Because <laughs> this only comes out to play at watering time. And watering time for this plant should have at least been yesterday or even the day before. This was quite dry. But we've got good news because the new growths are now doing new roots. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah, we've got new roots coming from the new growths. And we have three new growths. So that's a new root system on its way. Um, that's that plant's saviour, quite honestly. <laughs> I mean, the, the older bulbs are quite desiccated. Um, this growth here hasn't produced a fully matured bulb yet. Um, this one is um, just about mature, and that's a good bulb. You know, there's no desiccation on that. That will still swell up some more as time goes on. But it's got two good old bulbs and now it's got three new growths so that's on the up <laughs> so that can come off the not dead not dead yet list and go into the progressing nicely list but um yeah i mean if i can get one or two spikes off of all three of those new growths down the down the line a bit i'll be over the moon with that blooms last a long time highly fragrant and very attractive but on the up we like things that do that, especially ones that we've been um, killing on a regular basis over the years. So at last, one looks like it's going to make it. <laughs> do I sound like I'm over the moon? Oh, jolly good. Case in point, where damage is done through neglect, my own fault, but can't be repaired. Um, on previous growths... Uh, did I get it on my two? Yeah, there. Crinkly leaves. That was on this last bulb here. Yeah, crinkly leaves. There were some crinkly leaves on the bulbs that I inherited. So um, it obviously is not that unusual. It's a syllogeny. They are thirsty plants when they're growing. Thirsty plants. Yeah, they need a lot of hydration. And obviously... I've recently repotted this, which upset its root system. Not that it had a very good root system, but it had some. But not enough to hydrate that new growth and stop those leaves from crinkling. So when this growth matures, it's going to have leaves like that again, which is unsightly to say the, leaf, uh, the least. They're still functional as leaves. They'll still photosynthesize, yes, but they don't have to take the edge off the look of the plant. So damage already done to this growth, I've now got to try and avoid that damage on these two growths. And um, another thing on the point of watering, there are some plants around, not many, but there are some that are showing yellowy patches on some of the leaves. I've just noticed it, I wonder if I can get at it, on this, yeah, on this dendrobium down here. That's what I'm getting at. 
these are yellow patches. Now it's not sunburn, you know, <laughs> that plants a dendrobium, you'd have a job to burn that unless you just put it out in the yard. Um, but I believe it's calcium deficiency. Now calcium is an incredibly important ingredient to, to be in your water. It provides the necessary stuff for the inside of the plant to produce the cells that make new bits to the plant. New roots, new growths, new leaves. It provides an element that goes into that magical thing that happens inside the plant. It is important. Too much of it is damaging. You know, that's why some tap waters are just way out of line because they're very, very high in calcium with next to no other stuff. Well, that can become toxic. So it's a nice balance. But my RO water is absolutely pure. Nothing in it. The MSU fertilizer is a very well balanced fertilizer. But different plants use calcium at different rates. Now the majority of my plants are fine. So obviously that fertilizer is working great. But there are a few plants showing signs of some sort of deficiency and out of the elements that that fertilizer provides, the calcium is one of the suspect elements that for those plants might be a bit low. So I'm going to have to go and do a bit of research now and find out the best way to up the calcium. Now the easy way for me would to be to add some of my filtered tap water in with the RO water. That will up the calcium. But that gets fiddly because there's only a few plants affected that I can see so far. And they then become having to be watered separately. I've got enough of that blinking stuff going on to add in another type of plant that needs different water. But there are, there's things you can add, sprinkle on the top of the pot and stuff like that. So I'm going to go and have a look and see uh, what sort of things are available. And those plants showing those signs, there's another one up here. You know, this is a deciduous cane dendrobium, but some of the relatively new canes have got these yellow marks. It's a deficiency of some sort. It's not virus or anything like that. It's just a deficiency. Um, and I need to deal with it. You know, plants come from different environments where the water is different. Um, certainly in the um, Paphiopedalums, there are some that actually like quite alkaline um, medias and, you know, water. So that they would have to be watered with something different or have something added, one or the other. So I'm going to go and have a look at that and um, find out what I can get, get some, <laughs> and then just try adjusting the balance on those plants and, and see if it makes a difference. Because obviously those yellow patches, if they're extensive, those leaves aren't photosynthesizing anymore. So, you know, it can cause a problem because you then got a downhill spiral because the leaves aren't doing their job properly. The plant's not getting what it needs, which means it's not going to produce very good new leaves, which are then going to get, <laughs> you know, it's a never ending cycle that could end up losing you a plant. But that is nothing to do with uh, what I've just been talking about calcium. That's just actual lack of hydration. Nothing more. Down to me. Recently repotted in orchiata bark which dries fast so instead of watering that plant with the others as I go round that one needs keeping separate and watering far more frequently and not allowed to get anywhere near dry um, too late for that one but in plenty of time for those two so action required or I'm just going to continue getting that once it's got another new root system from the three new growths, the problem will probably be over because by then the Orchiata bark won't be as new as it is now and will stay wet longer. But this one needs watering more often. It's as simple as that. So my own fault. I'll take credit for that. Not that I like doing that sort of thing. I don't like crinkle leaves in my grow room. <laughs> but, you know, that's down to me. Um, neglect. And I've also noticed that the older pseudo bulbs are pretty damn desiccated. They weren't that good when I got the plant. Uh, but I don't want these two going down the same path. Yeah? So, uh, yeah. 
water more often. It's shouting at me. I need water and you didn't give it to me, so I'm going to crinkle me leaves. Nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, well, you're going to get drowned now, mate. Quick look at uh, some of the cattleyas while they're down. Um, this is the Young Min Orange that I took a little bit of a risk with on the um, repotting front. But I knew it would do better out of the pot it was in because I knew what was in it. But it is starting to produce new growths and that's what I was after. Right down there on the end of my finger, new root growth. So might not have been it's more guess than real judgment, but I just assumed, hopefully, that it would be okay, that once the spikes had been taken off, it would trigger the plant to do a spurt. Now, it could have been one of those plants where the bulbs actually have to mature before it pushes, it pushes out new roots, which would have, you know, put the plant in a bit of danger but it did have some reasonable roots so a risk was worth taking this is one happy cattleya it's growing roots exactly as i was hoping my cattleyas will do in the holy pots all over the place down in the pot out the holes over the side i don't care what you do but it's a happy plant produced loads of new roots and um, it's got one nice strong new growth on it i'd prefer to see another one um, that's the third ant I've seen, and fortunately he's hiding. <laughs> Every time I turn the pot, he runs around the back of one of those bulbs, but um, it's no good me trying to deal with the ants that are in the grow room. I've got to deal with the place they're coming from outside. The, you know, I know exactly where they are. They're in a corner where they get in under the paving, and the woodwork on that corner was rotten when I converted the uh, grow room. And there's going to be ways in through those little gaps in the wood, even though I did my best to fill up all the holes. That's where they're getting in, and that's where they need to be dealt with. Outside where the nest is, and whack them. So that will get done shortly. I can't do it at the moment, it's raining. <laughs> um, and another cattleya. Oh, just, um, this is Lelia anseps, and since it was put taken off its mount and put in its pot. It's doing a root growth spurt, but more importantly, it's also growing two new growths. And those two new growths are off one of the old, old back bulbs, not off the lead. This was the lead. This was the one that had the blooms on, the ones I forgot to take a picture of, one of my favorite all time cattleya types, and I forgot to take a picture. And I got a long wait <laughs> for some more blooms, <laughs> but uh, I got videos with it in. But yeah, so I mean, this one's coming on now. So I'd still class it as recovering, but good new root growth. Not much of it, but enough. And two new growths that will then produce more new roots, which will get that plant going again. But this is the one I wanted to talk about. This was the big blousy magenta one that um, took the second in that show. I got told off for my dirty leaves. You remember I said things like these marks that's residue from an in the insecticide, basically, and I didn't clean them off properly, otherwise they said it would have got first. I know now. But this one's got new growths just starting, but the most important thing is it's got new roots there and down in there. Now I can repot it. That's what I've been waiting for with this one. But again, it was a hope that once the bloom's finished, Oh, there's some more coming down here, look. So we've got the new roots. That's what I was... Oh, there's another new growth in there. Oh, you cheeky devil. <laughs> I, I'd missed that one completely because it's tucked in the middle of three bulbs, basically. So I'd missed that one. Yay! So it's got a new growth up in there and it's got one just starting there. It's just splitting the base there. So at least two new growths and that one there, probably three. So that needs getting in a holy pot now where it can stay for years and years and years and produce hopefully magnificent big magenta blooms like it did last time. At last, I've been waiting for that one. There's hardly any repotting left to do and this is the last one of my cattleyas that I've been hanging around for. So uh, we get that one done and then that's all my cattleya types in holy pots with big chunky bark ready to do their thing. There's a few other things went in holy pots and there's a few more to go but um, yeah. That's the last one of the bigger cats. So let's get that one done shortly. There's no rush. 
you know, I mean, that, that can go a week or even two. But when I get a chance and I do some more repotting, that one definitely goes in a holy pot. At last. I've been waiting for that one. <laughs> While we're on the subject of catlias, guess which two leaves were closest to the glass? Watch your catlias. Everybody says, oh, they need high light. Yeah, there's definitions of high light. Um, and catlias are quick to burn, <coughs> excuse me, if they get a little bit too much. They don't need a lot too much, they just need more than they were getting <coughs> over quite a short, per short period, and you will get light burn. You can call it sunburn if you like, but I call it light burn. So, but anyway, you know, that needs just coming back a bit, not a lot, you know. I mean, this leaf's okay, and this leaf's okay. And they were both almost as close, yeah? But, um, yeah, watch your catlias. And if you've got a Varnagara apple blossom, don't keep it with your other catlias. That one does not like highlight. You will burn your leaves quite quickly, and then your plant looks unsightly for a long period of time. So try and avoid getting that one too bright. There are others in that category that I can't name, but people who've got them will find out the hard way. Not all catlias take high light. Most do, but you'll get caught out, and once you get caught out, you know which ones of yours don't like the high light, but by then it's too late often. You know, so uh, I'll tell you a story. When I first converted this grow room, I assumed that up in the roof, um, because it's opaque perspex, double skinned, and a layer of bubble wrap, I thought, well, that's plenty good enough to keep the sun out. Well, no, it wasn't, because the first place I hung my catlias was up there. And I went to work, and when I come home, two of them were badly burned, and the other one was singed in one day. Now, part of that was moving them suddenly to an increased light level. If I'd done that gradually, the effect might not have been so bad. Now the Vandas are fine up there, you know, they acclimatise as the year goes on because they spend the winter up there too. So as the days get longer and the light gets brighter, they're in the same place, so they adjust to it naturally and they love it up there. But um, <coughs> this high light business for Catlias is, uh, <coughs> needs treating with caution. Okay, that's the end of the watering, now I've got to get on with the dirty deed. So things like soft furnishings, electrical gadgets and sensors either covered up or removed completely. Everything's shut down so that the, even the little computer fans are shut down so that there's no air movement in here at all. And then I can get on with the spraying. I've got to get something to stand on so that I can start at the top and gradually work down. And there's no point in worrying about where the drips go because everything's going to get soaked. And then as I back out of here to seal it up, I'll switch all the fans back on so that uh, hopefully it'll help dry things off because I've got no sun today and temperatures are relatively low, but it's still summertime. You know, it only goes down to about 18, 19 at night. It's not a big deal. And then tomorrow morning I can come down and air the place out like I did last time, change the air completely and um, <clears throat> go from there. All good fun, not. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Mm -hmm.